Good afternoon and welcome back to Good It With Truth. Yesterday we would have spoken about strength to stand and I pray that we all continue having the strength to stand and allowing God to fight our battles. Today we're getting into hidden in enemy territory. 1 Samuel chapter 27 verses 1 to 4 says, And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines. And Saul shall despair of me to seek me any more in any coast of Israel so shall I escape out of his hand. And David arose and passed over with the six hundred men that were with him unto Achish, the son of Maok, king of Gath. And David dwelt with Achish as Gath, he and his men, every man with his household, even David, with his two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the Carmelites, Nabal's wife. And it was so so that David was fled to Gath, and he sought no more again for him. So here David was running from Saul. He was not running from Saul because he couldn't take him out or because he was so afraid, but he did not want to harm Saul because he saw Saul as the Lord's anointed. Now, you have to understand that Saul was the one who gave him the opportunity to fight Goliath. But now, because people saw David greater than King Saul, King Saul wanted to take out David. But the Lord created a way of escape for David which was in the land of Philistines. Now, to know that David was going to Gath was also another interesting thing because Goliath was from Gath. So the giant, the champion that David took out was originally from the place he would now flee to. So, it's as if God created this place to hide David within enemy territory. So now we see David hiding in enemy's territory. Now sometimes we are moving from one place to the other. Sometimes we have to transition and sometimes God hides us. But sometimes we don't recognize the provision of God, the protection of God, Because we thinking we are so oppressed. Why are we here? What are we doing? And sometimes God provides within enemy territory. Now, these people did not harm David. They did not do David anything. This was a place God provided for David to hide him. Because it said in verse 4 that when Saul heard that David fled to God, that he searched again for him no more. So sometimes our provision, sometimes our protection, sometimes the answer we are looking for is not any method we are looking for it in. Sometimes God uses an unorthodox way to bring us out, to hide us, to lead us into where he wants us to go. And if we drop down to verse 6 and 7, it says, Then Achish gave him Ziklag that day, wherefore Ziklag pertaineth unto the kings of Judah unto this day. And the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a full year and four months. And sometimes we think, okay, we're here, we're waiting, we're living in an ungodly place, all these complaints we have. But... I dare you to see it as a provision of God. I dare you to see it in the way God sees it. I dare you to just appreciate where God has placed you in this time and in this season. 
and David didn't complain for the year and the four months, but he continued to do the work of the Lord. Before it said that he dwelt there for a year and four months, he went and warred against the Amalekites, the people who were witchcrafters and all these different things. So he wasn't putting aside the work of the Lord because he was in the land of the Philistine. He wasn't neglecting to do what God called him to do. No, he was doing what he had to do anyway because he found a way even while hidden in enemy territory to do the work of the Lord. And if we look at the persistence, the consistency of King David, we can learn in our own lives how we should continue to do the work of the Lord even when we feel like there's no way out. God created a way of escape for King David and he was protected for the time while Saul was still living because he refused to touch the Lord's anointed. Why did he refuse to touch the Lord's anointed? Because he was a man of honor and he honored the Lord. He honored the work of God and he listened to the instruction of God. Saul was like a father to him and so David honored him for not just being a father but for giving him the opportunity to take out Goliath, for giving him the opportunity to fight for God. And also Ziklag belonged to the kings of Judah up until this day. So therefore God wasn't just delivering David but he was using it as an opportunity to gain territory for the kingdom of God. So God's methods might be beyond us. We may not always understand, but always follow what he says. Always walk in obedience because he leads us to the place that is the best for us. 2 Samuel chapter 5 verses 1 to 4 says, Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, Thou wast he that led us out and brought us in Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. So here we are seeing the death of Saul and the anointing of David to be king over Israel. Now God had plans for David to be king over Israel, but he also wanted him to be an honorable man, a man of integrity. And that is why David could not kill Saul. That is why he could not touch Saul because he had to keep his integrity, he had to keep his honor, and he had to be the king that God wanted him to be. He had to be the man that, like Jesus, did no wrong. But of course, man is not perfect. So David committed one sin that was held against him because it was recorded in a book. It was recorded what he had done. But we see here, David making a league with the elders. If David had opted to kill King Saul, he would not have gained the respect of the elders. He would not have gained the respect of the leaders and therefore he would not have been able to make a league with them. So sometimes we might be having to do things that might seem unfair. We might be having to take the high road. We might be having to be a little more mature than everybody else. But don't discount it. God needs you to be a person of honor and a person of integrity. He needs you to always take the high road because it is in the high road. He can preserve your name. He can preserve your character. He can make you a person of integrity. 1 Kings chapter 15 verses 4 to 5 says, Nevertheless, for David's sake did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him, and to establish Jerusalem because David did 
that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only the matter of Uriah the Hittite. So this is the incident with Bathsheba that we were speaking about. So in God's eyes, David did all that was right, except in that one matter. So he did, he walked in obedience, he obeyed God, except in that matter. And why God held that matter against him is because he allowed the lust of the flesh to take over. And he did that which was not pleasing unto God. And it was him outrightly committing murder. It was him giving in to the lust of the flesh when he should not have. So it does not mean he wasn't forgiven of this sin. It just means that this one would be recorded against him because he was supposed to have been doing better. He was anointed king. He was a man after God's own heart. He would pursue God. He would check his heart. He would do all these things. So the fact that he did this, he had to be accountable for his actions because he outrightly murdered a man. It does not mean that he went to hell. It just means that he had to face judgment for this act. And all the rest of the life of David, he walked in obedience because nothing else was held against him. He was walking perfect in the eyes of the Lord except in this matter. So I encourage you today, walk holy, walk circumspect before the Lord. But even in any situation you are facing, be open to the method of God. Sometimes God hides you in enemy's territory for a purpose. That territory could one day become yours. That territory could one day become the kingdom of the Lord's through you. But you have to first be hidden in enemy territory. Sometimes you are pursued on every side. Sometimes things look like they're going to overtake you. But don't think that God is just going to use saved, sanctified people to deliver you. Don't think that there is just going to be a Christian person going to walk up to you and say, Hey, God sent me. It, it's done like that sometimes, yes, but it's not always done like that. So don't look for one method. Look for God to answer by His method. His method is always different to what we envision. So today, I dare you to believe that God has hidden you in enemy's territory. Do not go further than God. Wait. David had to wait a year and four months in the enemy's territory before he was delivered, before he was anointed king. And God was hiding him for that purpose. It was not his time as yet. It was not his time to reign. And when he reigned, he reigned 40 years. So that means he was 70 years at the end of his reign. So let us hold fast. Let us be patient. And let us remain hidden until God's appointed time. You may be hidden in enemy territory today, but don't worry. Your anointing is soon. Soon you will be king. Soon you will get that promotion that God has been promising you. And soon you will be delivered into the place where you own the territory that the enemy once possessed. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye.